let's talk about pre-production. Do it right and see your productions soar to new levels. As a solo filmmaker, pre-production can be pretty complicated, especially if you're the one doing everything yourself. In this video, I'm going to simplify the process and give you a step-by-step -step framework you can follow for your own projects. I'm not just going to talk about my process, I'm also sharing a template that you can use for your own projects. Now you might have guessed it already, but this video is sponsored by Millernote. I've been using the platform for almost three years now and it's added immense value to my productions. If I had to give one reason why I love it so much, it's because of the visual element. It's super easy to get a bird's eye view of your entire production and keep track of the process from start to finish. If you're not already using Melanote, check out the link in the description and sign up for a free account. I'm going to break the framework down into 10 steps. Not every project will always follow this exact flow, but I'll explain that as I break down the steps. So let's jump into the Miller note board and I'll briefly explain my approach. What you're seeing here is my home screen for a project I did for Sony when the FX3 was launched. Up at the top, we have our 10 steps. These cards are basically shortcuts to the relevant cards down here, but I use the ones at the top to indicate where I am in the pre-production process using a legend of three colors. When a box is ticked green, it means the step is complete. If it's orange, the process is still pending. If it's red, it means that something in that step requires urgent attention and needs to be locked in for the plan or the shoot to move ahead. Step one is to consider the budget. I start here because the budget will always dictate what is possible. How many actors are required? What is the cost of using locations? Will I need a sound guy, etc. Since this is the first step, I've added a budget card in the about section. If you double click on it, you'll get this budget calculator. You simply add your starting total, set a limit for production expenses and start adding up costs. The table works the same as an Excel sheet. So if you change details in any of the blocks, it will change the relevant total values. For example, if I make the expense limit lower, the amount that goes over budget will be displayed as minus. Ultimately, you want to come in under budget and still be happy with your net profit. But what if you don't have any budget? Now the 10 steps will look different because you have to start with what is freely available. This means making a list of locations, possible actors and crew you know that you can get for free or at a very low cost. Take all this info and reverse engineer it into a story. Let's say you have a house. You have two friends who can act for free. It might be easier to tell a story around a couple all shot in one location. This method can also translate into paid projects where you find an epic location and then build a concept around it. This is what I did with the ZVE1 launch video. Technically, I didn't have any time to take on the project, but I've been dying to shoot at this one location. And after looking at a few references and a meeting with the stylist, I was able to create a Blade Runner slash Dune inspired fashion film riding on the novelty of the amazing location. Moving on to step two, story. With story, you've got three scenarios. Number one is writing your own story or paying a writer to write a story for you. Number two, the client has a story that you just have to tell in the best way possible. And then three is my favorite, to find a story that already exists. I love this approach, especially when you don't have a budget, but even when you do, it adds so much more authenticity to the final production. A good example of this is my short film Perseverance. The film is based on the true story of Barry and his struggles to get his helicopter pilot's license. From working multiple odd jobs to studying late at night, the story had potential. But what really sold me on the idea was the fact that he was able to play himself and the cherry on top was using his own voice, which added so much more weight to the final experience. Now, when it comes to writing a story, I don't have enough confidence in my own ability. So in this case, I usually find someone to write a story for me. When using a writer, it's important to explain the limitations defined in step one, which is budget. I only use people who write for film because they have a better understanding of what is feasible and what is not. Now that you have a story, you can move on to step three, which is all about inspiration. For client projects, they usually have references of videos they like and what they imagine the project should look like. In these cases, I make a card called references and populate it with all the links and images. These references don't have to dictate the final look of the film, but it can give you some pointers to develop a mood board, which is one of the most important aspects of pre-production. 
This is where you build your own set of visuals that could potentially work with the story defined in step two. From YouTube to Vimeo, I make sure I watch as many videos as possible and the frames that really stand out get a screenshot. To show how powerful the mood board is, just look at some side-by-side -side comparisons of recent films of mine. On the FX30 launch film, I found these two films with moody garage scenes that inspired the look. Both videos had some elements I liked, so I combined it in my video. Same for the riding scenes. There were two shots that really stood out and I just put my own spin to it. In the Sony FX3 launch film, I worked with a director friend and he found two films that almost summed up what we wanted to achieve with the project. So we worked with a few key elements and if you compare it with the final outcome, you should see the resemblance. But we put our own creative expression to it, which is the best way to steal. The mood board is a great place to refer back to on shoot day especially if it feels like you've lost inspiration in a scene. I also use apps like Frameset and Shot Deck for still frames because it's super easy to find with the search function instead of scanning through an entire video looking for something relevant. Once you have a folder full of images, you simply drag and drop and Milanote will automatically sort them in a neatly organized fashion. Adding notes with arrows to relevant images can add more context. A quick tip here is to go to your music licensing platform of choice and picking a genre you consider for your film. Hit play and start searching for images. What happens sometimes is you'll find a song you like while you're in the headspace of the project and the success rate of having a song before the production is higher because you're able to plan all the shots around the music. On the production of the Sony A7 Mark IV launch film, we decided on the music before. So after the first day of shooting, we felt like we missed some shots. So we were able to drag in a bunch of clips and quickly realized what we needed to change to make sure we get the required shots on day two. Step four is the script. If the story is the what, the script is the how. The script translates the story into scenes that you can execute on screen. Some projects are scripted from start to finish, but it's important not to be precious about the script because the actual film production doesn't always pan out exactly as scripted. Because Milanote is cloud-based, it's easy to invite collaborators like directors and producers to add to your boards. Step five is all about talent. Actors, models, and anyone who is potentially featuring in your project gets a space here. This is a great place to add contact details, availability, and preferences. Using the same legend, green means the talent is secured, orange means pending, and red means urgent. Before I carry on, if you like this template and you want to use it for your own projects, you can copy my board link and paste it into your own board once you've created an account. Step six is to find locations for all your scenes. Here you want to add some reference images of the locations. Again, using colors helps to mark your progress. If a location is secured, you can mark it green. If it's pending, orange and red for urgent attention. Most of the images I have in this board are taken from actual location scouts with the director, with some notes at the bottom about which time of day would be the best for filming, taking into account available light and the ability to light artificially. Step seven is your shot list. And here we're looking at the pre-production for perseverance. Working with the script, I try to be as detailed as possible. For example, will it be shot on a gimbal or handout? What frame rate and what focal length? This way, you can plan your shots in the order of setups. For example, with lighting, you always start with the wide first and then move in closer. If it's a gimbal shot, get the gimbal shots out of the way before you go back to another rig or vice versa. This prevents unnecessary back and forth between rigs. But the most important part of a shot list is to have an outcome for every scene. An outcome defines the mood and end goal of a scene. With all this planning, I've adopted the philosophy of managed expectations. And it goes something like this. You don't always get what you want, but mostly you get what you need. By this I mean that sometimes we can be so precious about the plan and certain shots in the shot list that we're not able to get on the day. And instead of seeing the film as a flop, try to get something alternative because that very thing could end up being the magic that makes the film special. And that usually comes out in the edit. So sometimes you just have to trust the process. Another thing I love about Milanote is how easy it is to access your boards with the app. When you open your shot list, you can physically tick the checkboxes of the shots as you complete them. Mentally, this helps me to keep sane. Step eight is to set up a mind map. The mind map can differ in so many ways based on a project, but what it does is it gives you the director and DP a visual overview of how the day will flow. In this example, the mind map is structured based on the chronological order of filming from location to location. This is not used to keep track of the story, but to keep track of the shoot. When what needs to be filmed, displayed in a visual way. 
you can add your models and extra info per location, plus a checklist for props required for each scene. So unless all your props are arranged, don't tick the mind map green. Step nine is to set up a call sheet. The call sheet is there for everyone involved in the production. From client to crew, this document has all the most important info, contact details, detailed schedule of events, including travel time and links to locations. Millernote easily integrates with Google Maps, so just throw in a link and it gives you a preview. Step 10 is gear check. Just because the step is last doesn't mean you start with it last. Although final gear check happens before the day, this is also where you populate the list of gear that you will be using, as well as a wish list of what you want to rent. So once you have your budget sorted, you can already start here. The checkboxes are amazing when you're loading gear because it eliminates any chance of leaving gear behind both before and after the production. Now that you have your shoot planned, exporting to PDF is super easy and you can decide who needs to get what. Doing pre-production on this level has really helped me cope with the realities of shoot day scaries. Yes, that feeling you get when you rock up on set and think that any moment, someone is going to tell you that you don't belong here and you don't know what you're doing. Yep, we all go through it to some extent, but putting in the work before has revolutionized the way I feel on shoot days and gives me so much more confidence even when things go wrong. Melonote is available for free without a time limit. Sign up with the link in the description and don't forget to grab my template. If you made it this far, I want to thank you for watching. If you like the way I color grade my images, I'm going to release my own course soon. So check out the link in the description where you will be notified once it's live. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.